Coming up on today's San Francisco 49ers report, welcome in. We have some concerning Niners injury news, including an update on defensive tackle Eric Armstead, plus San Francisco making a couple of roster moves going into this Eagles game on Sunday. Before we get started, pretty awesome moment here on the San Francisco 49ers report. A couple of weeks ago, we did surpass 100,000 subscribers, and today, YouTube sending us that silver plaque to really celebrate this milestone and make it official. I might even use this as a little bit of a mirror right now to get ready for the show, see how I'm looking. Just kidding. But in all seriousness, thank you so much for your support of the channel here. And if you've helped us get to 100,000 subscribers, meaning you're subscribed to the show, I want you to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. Can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart. This faithful community here at Chat Sports is really special. I feel blessed to be able to have this platform. And with that, enough of this. Let's get started. So we begin by taking a look at the Niners injury report. This coming after San Francisco taking the practice field on Wednesday at the SAP Performance Center in Santa Clara. Massive week in this preparation for the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday at Lincoln Financial Field. As the Niners right now, three-point road favorites. Kyle Shanahan was asked about that today, and he said... It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but I think the odds makers know that this Niners team, they're a really talented bunch, and they're playing good football right now. But could they be without Eric Armstead in this game? That's part of the concerning injury news that I want to talk about because today, Eric Armstead, who really is one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL, did not practice because of a foot injury. Ray Ray McLeod, the starting punt and kick returner, did not practice because of a rib injury. And then backup running back Jordan Mason, dealing with a hamstring ailment right now. Myself, a lot of you included, have been asking for Jordan Mason to play more. Might not happen against the Eagles because of that hamstring injury. Why all of these injuries are important in the lead up to this game. You think about the players that are hurt and the roles that they play, specifically with Eric Armstead, as well as Ray Ray McLeod. For Armstead, he's one of your starting defensive tackles and a really special player on this defense. And then with Ray Ray McLeod, he is your number one kick and putt returner. Last year, one of the best in the NFL. This year, not as good, but still a really dynamic player. And then Jordan Mason has contributed on special teams. He's made some tackles, he's made some plays, and he's one of your backup running backs. You are facing here a very physical Eagles defensive front. They can get after it, and they're the top rushing defense in the National Football League. So if you're without a player like Jordan Mason, who can sometimes get you some of those gritty yards, you're certainly going to miss a player like that. With Armstead, this is really the biggest news and biggest development up to this point on the injury front for San Francisco. Trent Williams, by the way, a veteran maintenance day today. No concern there. Kyle Shanahan was asked, hey, Coach, is this the same foot injury that Armstead was dealing with last year, which kept him out of action, and then I thought really hobbled him and affected his play coming down the stretch. He had plantar fasciitis last year. Kyle Shanahan said, I'm not really sure. What I'm sure about is how good Armstead has been really over the last four games because he has totaled four and a half sacks, seven quarterback hits. He's disrupted the pocket up the middle, through the interior, moving quarterbacks off their spots, but just the big body that he is and the attention that he demands, sometimes double teams allowing other players along that Niners defensive line to free up on some of those matchups. Armstead has always been underrated, and I know a lot of you are probably freaking out. Chase, what are you talking about? Eric Armstead sucks. Let me say this again. Eric Armstead has always been criminally underrated by the Niners fan base. Keeping him over DeForest Buckner was a mistake at the time because DeForest Buckner is a special player and he's better than Eric Armstead. And that's really the valuation that the Niners went with. But that doesn't mean that Eric Armstead can't play. Don't let the lack of sacks fool you. He has been instrumental to this Niners defense being one of the best defenses in the NFL since 2019. The double teams that he demands, the disruption that he's able to cause, 
and how offenses have to account for his mere presence makes him a special player. He can collapse the pocket by himself, and we've especially seen that over the last four games where he's able to really dominate the interior of the opposition's offensive line, and because of that, the pocket gets muddied, the quarterback has to change off of his spot, the sight line is a little bit altered. And in 2023 this year, Armstead is having a terrific season. Overall pro football focus grade of 81.7 a pass rush grade of 84.9. Run defense has never been his specialty, 60.1, but he's solid there. He has been able to total 36 pressures, 23 hurries, 13 stops, 5 sacks on 334 pass rushing snaps. And if you're without him, or if he is hobbled against the Philadelphia Eagles, that hurts you. The Eagles' offense is really, really good. Jalen Hurts has been spectacular when tied or trailing in the second half, but they also have playmakers all across the field. Their offensive line, arguably the best in the NFL. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, an excellent one-two punch at wide receiver. One of Philadelphia's fortes, though, is also running the football. And if Jalen Hurts can just drop back, sit in the pocket, he has shown with his growth at the quarterback position, he could carve you up. Philadelphia averaging 28 points per game. That's number three in the NFL. They're ninth in yards per game, 10th in yards per play, third down efficiency, third. And then once they get into the red zone, they're converting red zone trips into touchdowns nearly 63% of the time. That's number five in the NFL. What's going to give on Sunday? The Snyder's defense, awesome as well. Number one in points per game, fifth in yards, fifth in yards per play, third down's not great, red zone very solid, but if you're without Eric Armstead, that of course does hurt you. As for the offensive line, let's go from Armstead on the defensive line to the Niners offensive line. Spencer Burford limited today because of that knee injury. I think regardless of if he's ready to go or not, I would start John Feliciano. Even if John Feliciano does start, Spencer Burford could get mixed in. The Niners have done this under head coach Kyle Shanahan and offensive line coach Chris Forster. They did it with Daniel Brunskill, where he would kind of substitute in and out of the lineup at that right guard spot. You could see a little bit of a guard rotation on Sunday against that excellent Eagles defensive line with both John Feliciano as well as Spencer Burford. In speaking about this Eagles game, I want to gauge your confidence level in the Niners getting a victory on the road on Sunday. And I want you to scale it from 1 to 10. Your confidence level, 1, not confident at all, 10, very confident. Let's hear from you right now. We're only getting started on today's show. Coming up next, Niners making multiple roster moves going into this Philadelphia tilt but first, today's show is sponsored by Factor. Get 50% off using the code NINERSCHAT50. And this holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you fuel up fast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They offer chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals that are delivered straight to your door. You're going to save time, you're going to eat well, and you're going to stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all of your holidays. My new running streak, closing in on 200 days. I'm very serious and strict about what I put into my body. That's why I'm cool with Factor, because this is quality food, doesn't take long to make, and with me being so busy covering the NFL and hosting the 49ers report, covering the NBA, college football, Major League Baseball here at Chat Sports. I'm doing it all. That on top of my fitness goals, I just don't have a lot of time. So with Factor, you can pick your pre-made meals. They're prepped and cooked to perfection. You heat them up and you enjoy them. And you get 50% off at factormeals.com slash NinersChat50. They offer smoothies as well. Smashed a couple of those last night like I smashed some drinks during some of our watch parties. All right. Let's segue to this couple of roster moves that the Niners have made this week. A couple of days ago, they did sign Eric Harris, a safety, to their practice squad. Was recently with the Atlanta Falcons in 2021 and in 2022. He is 33 years old. Very experienced player. Does have 43 starts in his career from 2019 to 2021. He started a lot of games with the Raiders and with the Falcons, 14, 12, and 12. So this is a guy who's seen a lot of football, and he's very thankful to the faithful 
for being faithful to him in continuing his NFL career. He took the Twitter to say this on the 27th on Monday. Happy are those, or he said this, happy are those who remain faithful under trials because when they succeed in passing such a test, they will receive as their reward the life which God has promised to those who love him. That's James 1, 12, 22. And I like how he capitalized faithful right there because the Niners, faithful to the bay, that's one of their slogans. Larry Kruger, friend of the show, I go on his YouTube channel Every single Friday, I'll be back on Friday, probably previewing Niners, Eagles, having a good conversation about that. The real ones know that I've been taking some of that content, putting it up on the YouTube channel here on the 49ers Report. He released this story and stories about Eric Harris, which are kind of crazy, and I didn't know about this, but what a story, what a background, what a path for him. Krug saying, way to go, Eric. Your story is a story of personal perseverance, perseverance from working at a potato chip factory to working for UPS to overcoming a car accident and a serious injury to your wife to a tryout with the Hamilton Tiger Cats to having an extensive NFL career, earning a contract, and now to the Niners. An amazing story that isn't close to being over. Hopefully Super Bowl hero is in your future. You're an inspiration, bro. Keep rocking and rolling. Your story is inspiring to many. Krug. Longtime Bay Area radio host, but was also a football scout in the CFL. So I'm not sure I'll have to ask him about this if he has that connection with Terrace because of his time with the CFL. But the Hamilton City uh, Tiger Cats, they do play in the CFL. Either way, gritty path, pretty fascinating story, and it kind of works well with the Niners mantra, right? Of being a rugged, blue collar type of team. And after the George Odom injury, he did put on Instagram, he's going to be out two months biceps tear. He got surgery on that this week. Harris could provide some special team snaps. That's where the Niners are really going to miss George Odom. Kyle Shanahan even saying he thinks that Odom is one of the finest special teams players in the NFL. San Francisco is going to have to get creative without him. I totally agree. An all-pro special teamer with the Indianapolis Colts. That's why the Niners signed him after the 2021 season, season in which their special teams units were not good at all. So the Niners adding a safety. They're also adding a cornerback to the practice squad. Kimon Hall, the corresponding roster move here, releasing offensive lineman Henry Bird. He was a UDFA, undrafted free agent in 2019. He went to North Texas in Denton. 18 games played with the Chargers in 2021 and in 2022. That is the only NFL experience that he has had up to this point. Has hopped around a couple of preseason rosters, a couple of practice squads, and now with the Niners a little bit thin in that secondary, he heads to San Francisco's practice squad. Going back to this matchup against the Philadelphia Eagles, here is the Eagles injury report on this Wednesday. Grant Calcaterra, backup tight end, did not practice because of an ankle injury. Fletcher Cox did not practice because of a groin. He left the Bills game on Sunday because of that. Zach Cunningham not expected to play as the Eagles are 30th in DVOA against tight ends. So they're already banged up at linebacker. They're already bad at covering tight ends. Could be a huge day for George Kittle. Justin Evans, one of their backup safeties, did not practice because of a knee injury. And then Dallas Goddard with that forearm fracture he suffered in week nine against the Cowboys might be able to play this week. If not, he is targeting a return next week against the Dallas Cowboys. And then limited participants, A.J. Brown, Jordan Davis, Lane Johnson, Julio Jones, Devontae Smith, DeAndre Swift, and Milton Williams. Of note here is Lane Johnson. He was a surprise scratch against the Bills because of a groin injury. After the Super Bowl last year, he underwent core muscle surgery. In the NFC Championship game, he actually shut out. Nick Bosa, as he held the defending defensive player of the year in check in that game, and he's arguably the best right tackle in football. So if Lane Johnson can play, that's obviously huge news for Philadelphia and for San Francisco. Him being a limited participant on Wednesday is a good sign for Eagles fans for him being able to play in this NFC Championship game rematch. Speaking of Nick Bosa, he was asked about this Eagles tilt on Sunday, and I kind of like what he had to say here. 
Neither team finished the job last year, so it's not like the Eagles are looking back and reminiscing on an NFC Championship win either. I'm sure we're both sad at the end of the year. Both teams sad because the Eagles lost in the Super Bowl, losing a 10-point lead at halftime. San Francisco did not go there. They felt as though they should have been there, but they got unlucky with that Brock Purdy injury. And now this Niners team, very, very healthy. Brock Purdy is healthy, and we'll get to see what San Francisco can do almost at full strength against this Eagles team in this rematch of last year's NFC Championship game bow. Programming alert for the rest of the week. We will be live here on the San Francisco 49ers Report on Thursday, 5.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 p.m. Pacific. A lot of great content on the docket. Over the weekend, I will be releasing even more content for my appearance on The Krug Show with Larry Kruger. And then we will be live on Sunday for Niners Eagles. Two-hour pregame show is what we're planning on right now. Things can change. It gets fluid. We'll at least go live an hour and a half before the game. But as of right now, two-hour pregame show. Get ready. It's going to be a blast. Everything gets underway. 2.25 p.m. Eastern, 11.25 a.m. for those of you on the West Coast. Appreciate everybody for watching today's show. We secured the plaque. Thanks to everybody who helped us get there. And we ain't done. We're going to keep it moving.